Hello, I'm Entrilisium. Welcome to Aurora Forex, the fantastic, frustrating space strategy game. So, today we're going to be doing a couple of things, and primarily amongst them, we are going to be making boarding troops to fly over to an enemy vessel, land on the enemy vessel, cut away into the hull, kill everyone inside, and take it for ourselves, and hopefully it will have better tech than us, and then we can use that tech. Uh, so, before we get onto that, Due to some RP events, uh, there was a lot of voting about the whole in-game houses thing. Um, the great houses are the houses that rule over uh, Earth with the consent of the First Elysian. And uh, there was a big blow up about, are we going to take power away from them and take away their militaries? And the houses were like, no. And everyone else was like, kind of, yeah. And they voted to do it. So after that, we now have ourselves um, these. I think it's like 10... 10 companies of house auxiliary troops, uh, all of them named after the houses, or in the case of minor houses, chuck together to make a company. And so we have uh, DeWitt, Borealis, Crystal Vault, Day, Duncan, Kruber, Laconia, Mapulon, Onyx Harper, UC, and Prose. Now, these are made up of... Uh, have I got it selected here? No. There we go. These are made up of a command APC along with House Elite, which is light power armor, a House Guard, which is just, uh, you know, no power armor at all, uh, logistics troops, t battle tanks, which is effectively just a medium chassis with a medium anti-tank weapon, and I believe a anti-personnel weapon, a House APC, which has a medium auto cannon, and some bunkers along with a construction vehicle. So they're not going to be particularly amazing, but they're certainly reasonable, and they will actually be helpful, especially if we want to put them on a world It's just kind of like a defend this world, do a thing, sure. Um, they're not specialized in any one area. They're kind of a mishmash of stuff that was confiscated from the houses because they were like, yeah, we're taking away your militaries. Um, that's glossing over it. There was a lot of RP behind this, and it's been a big thing and still an ongoing thing in the RP channels. But uh, I added those on the basis of uh, it seemed like a fair thing in RP. And also, it was not going to hugely overbalance the game, but uh, I don't really mind that. It's called RP on. Anyway, so uh, we're going to be making boarding troops. Now, there are a couple of things we want for this. We have got ourselves the boarding technology, both the boarding bay, uh, which allows you to board, and the boarding speciality, which allows you to board. Plus, I kind of want to make them space marines, just because. Uh, so to do that, I kind of think we need, uh, where is it? Tech, 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 tech. Basic genetic enhancement for infantry. Which is going to take another two months. So we're basically pretty close to that. And when we get that, we'll start making our troops. Now, the only other thing that we might want is a better engine. And by better, I mean more powerful. Um, we don't really care about fuel consumption when it comes to boarding ships. Because they're probably just going to be very short range. In fact, we might even do shock horror carriers with this one so if we have a look down at uh hoyle you're gonna take until next year to make the engine well we can make the vessel with a dummy engine and then we can just upgrade the engine when we get that we'll probably make some like fighters probably the full 500 ton and then put troops on board and make basically like boarding ships i was about to say drop ships but they're not dropping because they're going in space so there you go anyway carry on oh actually before we carry on there is one thing i would like to do and that is uh looking over here our admin commands we've got obviously you know uh, a lord admiral in charge united earth navy uh, then we've got the auxiliaries the army the battle fleet civilian habs etc um these can have bonuses and you can apply people to them and then their bonuses i think a quarter of their bonus or something applies to the ships below them um that said they only apply if they're within the sector limit because it's all based on your sectors and what have you uh, generally, this is kind of pointless, but for RP reasons, I am going to give a person to each of these ranks. It is actually going to be somewhat useful thinking about it, though. Like, if we have a look at, like, cargo, if you give um, a logistics person to this role, so you give a, a, you know, commander who's got a really high logistics bonus, they'll get a quarter of that, and logistics reduces the unload time. And this will apply to everyone in Sol. I mean, basically, all of our cargo goes to or from earth so this bonus although small will apply to everything which actually be pretty decent so we're going to bring up the commander screen naval admin commands we've got oh wow do we need an admiral 
Why do you need an admiral? What? Why do you need an admiral? I mean, look at these. Like, you need a... Uh, what's it called? A commodore. Commodore, commander. Great. And then we go down. Diplomatic. Admiral. Why do you... You've got two diplomatic kitty vessels. Is it because of, like, the rank on the... Compact kitty. Senior... Commodore. Yeah, it must be due to the fact that you've got a pretty high officer on board a diplomatic vessel, and that's pushing up who can be in charge. Interesting. All right. So, either way, uh, I've put up logistics um, and mining, and we can, say, put someone in charge of mining in charge of the mining fleet, which admittedly only has one ship in it, but whatever. Um, so, we will assign you. Done. And... I'm going to do this for a few things. I'm not going to make you watch because it's tedious. Oh, fun fact, by the way, um, it's the production bonus, I believe, that is applied from your commander to any salvaging. So, Knight Commander Bethany Borealis, you are going to be in charge of recovery because recovery is mostly salvage and also picking up life pods. That's, that's not a stat. Salvage is. I want that. Okay, I've filled up probably more than I needed to here. Like, I've gone through so many of these and put people in charge of them. I wonder if I can click on them now to find out who's in charge. No, that would be too helpful. Okay. That's fine. It's fine. Uh, ooh. Okay, so this is also one thing we can do. We can change the types of some of these commands. For instance, uh, Battle Fleet. Let's say the command type is now Naval which means that it will get a crew training bonus, a reaction bonus, and an engineering bonus, and a tactical bonus, which, great. So we'll just update map. Uh, you can also change where you're starting from. So, like, we can say, hey, this is based at Kelica, Mr. Gray, Strategist, Fulgar. So we're going to say, obviously, Sol. We don't need to select that, I don't think, because it's already selected. Update. Oh, there we go. It does say Lord Protector Marlon Devaran. Okay. And so we can do these for a few things. Um, like, for instance, the army fleet, which is, it's not really a fleet, it's, it's not really an army fleet, even. It's just, it moves people around. I, we're going to put this as the logistics, because it will help with the unload time, because it gets the logistics buff. And we'll say, Sol, Earth, update. Um, do you say where you're based at? Like, if I click on you, it doesn't seem to be like, yeah, I'm based at so-and-so. It's really hard to tell. Can I just say select on map? No. Okay. Doesn't help. Ah, it does say here. Right. Ind. Industrial. Earth. Okay. So it does say. So we'd want to put you as like a, oh, it's no fleet commander on you. Eh, whatever. It doesn't matter. Mining routes. Uh, you do have Admiral Henry DeWitt in charge of mining route. Okay. Uh, that'll be logistics, obviously, to try and decrease the unload time. And bam, logistic mining route. Awesome. This is completely unnecessary, but I feel now I've started, I need to finish it. That's a bit of a problem. Okay, that's all done now. They're all nicely assigned and made pretty full. We can get on with our lives. Uh, right. Carry on. My wayward son. Right, so the battler has completed orders, which means that it's it's moved all of the uh, mines that we were worried about incredibly quickly. Uh, so we should probably get someone to move the mass drivers. Because there were, uh, there were a few we need to move two of them, I believe. Um, I'm trying to remember where they were, though. Where were they? Oil! Where are your mass drivers stored? Oil, tell me. Um, oil. Comet 4, they need to go to. Ah! 57. Load. Mass driver. Unload. Done. Okay, now you can come back to Earth. 
Uh, I mean, you grab, could just grab some minerals before you go, I guess. Uh, oh, you should load minerals in case there are any left. There probably aren't, but just in case. Uh, load all minerals from Asteroid 57. Then load all minerals from Hoyle. And then come back to Earth, just in case. Um, do we actually have a mining uh, fleet set up to go to Hoyle? We probably do, right? If we don't, that's bad. Yeah, we do. Mining run, Hoyle, Calica, Agent. Easy enough. We probably have one sub sub uh, subject delta. Like, I know we haven't put loads of mines there, but we've got enough. Unload. More minerals. Refuel. And then... Can we produce more... Transports? Please, I need more transports. I, I know I don't have the geranium. I know we don't have geranium. I get it. But also, I need more transports. Uh, they don't cost a huge amount. I know that's not going to stop you from complaining at me about the whole lack of stuff, but sure. Uh, we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. Wish I'd hit use component there, but... Probably not any components we can use for these ones anyway, but whatever. Uh, I would also like to build another melody, but melodies are expensive. So... Uh, oh, do we want to sell the Battler to do anything else? Like, it could help out with a number of things. Uh, we should check in on Titan, because it would probably be moving the Terraform above Titan when the temperature gets high enough. The temperature just isn't getting there. It makes me feel that for some reason it's stalled. The pressure's getting to such a point where it actually might be unlivable soon. Um, you know what? Let's just remove the hydrogen now. Hydrogen. Which when you clicked it here, it changed it up here. You know, I'm I'm putting in nice things that'd be, you know, good in the UI. I don't know why I'm saying that. It feels like it's gonna be a little bit unfruitful. But uh, you know, this is sort of the you know, from a UI perspective, that's my that's my field. Um clicking here would have an effect up here, ideally. Um I mean ideally you wouldn't also have click to add and then not adding is taking away because not adding is not taking away not adding is not adding um this can be very confusing um and you can accidentally accidentally just remove oxygen from an atmosphere and kill people i've done it it's awful it's really annoying yeah that made people die anyway not in this playthrough i don't think sorry if you died because of that okay we got rid of the hydrogen from titan's atmosphere we have acceptable levels of water Colony cost has dived. Like, population support payment structure is almost a billion now. I'd, I'd like it to be without infrastructure, though, guys. Can we can we get the temperature up, please? Please. Oh, God. Uh, let's just add to, like, 2.6. It, it'll tell me when it's livable, hopefully. I mean, it should do. I've had it not tell me before, I feel. We have infantry basic genetic enhancement. It has begun. Okay, let's just quickly have a look at the next tier. So improved genetic enhancement goes from, I think, a 25% HP buff to a 60% HP buff, but it does cost 10,000. Um, yeah. Ooh, precursor alien autopsy. Huh. We found their bodies, I guess. Yeah, just very old. Um, I think we want to do terraforming rate. Like, that's the thing that we probably want to start working on. And, you know, while I could do infantry enhancement, that would mean we need to wait longer. And I want to build them now. So, um, let's just quickly go over. This is the Fusco. It's going to be our, probably a boarding fighter. Now, we could make it like a boarding fac or something. Here's the issue. Boarding is... Firstly done by jumping from your ship to their ship. I mean, that's kind of obvious, right? Now, the way that works in this game is that there is a percentage chance you can do it. The percentage chance is kind of based on how much faster you are than them. So if you shoot them and take out their engines, it's pretty easy to board them. However, if you want to board someone who's moving, you kind of want to be a lot faster than them. Now, you can do it a few different ways. Firstly, you can just have a ship, make it a fast ship. 
then you know you're going to run into issues of well how far can this ship go is it going to be a particularly big ship because it's going to need to have a big drive and need a lot of fuel um or it's just going to run around slurping fuel from a tanker all the time and then it's going to slow down by the tanker until you unleash it which you know is fair or you make it a parasite craft you know a fac a fighter whatever you put it in a cargo hold or well, not a cargo hold in a hangar whatever you know put it in a hangar deck and then you have a ship run around with it and then when you spot a target you drop it out of the hangar deck you get it to power forwards with its drive which is much more powerful than the one that was carrying it and you know it will burn through fuel incredibly quick but it didn't need to use that drive until it got to the location so that's fine it can use the more efficient drive on the actual ship itself so we have a choice here like we can make this different sizes and that's going to determine how big our troop formations need to be so i don't know why i'm putting cargo hold it's because i said cargo hold earlier i'm confusing myself there's boat bay and there's hangar deck so hangar deck you can get a thousand ton craft in boat bay you can get a 250 ton craft in. obviously we can make boat bays you know add two of them now it can be a 500 ton vessel so we can basically choose like do we want to have a fac that goes into a boat bay well a hangar deck in that case or do we want to have heavy fighters or do we want to have multiple heavy fighters that are in a hangar deck like you know we could put three heavy fighters in there it depends what we go for really um yeah so let's get rid of those wider view boop 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 and let's go have a look at troop transports we're interested in the boarding bay so the standard is a thousand ton troop capacity and the boarding bay itself is a thousand one hundred tons so obviously it's not gonna fit in a fact this is something you'd put on like a corvette or whatever um a thousand tons of troops will overpower pretty much any ship very easily though especially if you build them right uh meanwhile there's a small which is 250 tons this obviously is a 275 ton module you could get this onto a heavy fighter or if we get rid of that there's the 100 ton now 100 ton is going to be a pretty small unit you know you're talking or like 12 troops with improved personal weapons or you know five troops with big machine guns or whatever well i think maybe seven anyway um this is going to be tougher to take over any craft with. You'll probably want multiple, which is fine. You can send multiple, you know, craft to do the thing. That's totally doable. And you might take losses as you come in. It depends if we want to take on a fully staffed enemy craft or whether we want to take on one that we've like kind of just shot a lot of the engines out of and it's just sitting there and it's weakened. Um, now, I know that we're doing a lot of theory crafting right now, but one of the things about boarding troops is that they need a hole in the enemy armor. The enemies aren't just going to open up airlocks and stuff for them. So they need a hole. This can be done by shooting the enemy vehicle. Just shoot the craft until there's a hole in their armor. I mean, that works. It's also really handy to be able to just board enemy craft that are just sitting there. You're like, ah, I've shot your engine out. Great, we'll just go board you. You probably shot the armor out to shoot the engine out, right? Yeah, troops go on, they go in the hole, done. Or the troops get on the hull and like, there's no hole. Uh, let's place breaching charges. And then they will over time very slowly i think it's like every five minutes uh, blow up one bit of armor and then they'll keep going until they get inside the ship um just very time consuming but they will do it so there's a couple of options and getting intact ships is great i'm thinking if we go over to the shipyard we could maybe take advantage of this and the production things that are changing over here to like maybe make ourselves like a next generation corvette maybe make it not too fast and then don't even use the boat bay at all and like we could put quite a few troops in this now the reason behind this is that way it's got multiple different roles like we don't have to worry about parasite craft etc but likewise we could make it parasite craft uh, it's so tempting i don't know what to do hmm 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 you know what? When I don't know what to do, I'm going to take it to the Discord server and ask whether they want Parasite Craft or a multi-role Corvette. Now, the multi-role Corvette will obviously be slower than a dedicated boarding craft, and so it would be more used to target already damaged enemy ships. 
Okay, so uh, a quick bit of voting later. It seems that people are in favor of going for a small craft and carrier. So we're going to make ourselves probably a little carrier that can fit in maybe 15,000 tons. So it won't be a huge carrier. And then, well, we could also make it 10,000 if we wanted instead, but we'll have trouble fitting that in 10,000. Uh, but we're also going to make ourselves a little vessel that can just speed along, very short range, drop troops and be done. Uh, the issue with that is, do we want to make this vessel a... Obviously, we said, you know, we could go a thousand tons or whatever. I think that the best choice is really to keep this as a fighter. That way, we can just produce it with industry. A lot quicker, a lot easier. Um, we could go very small. We can make them 250 tons. We could probably get, like, maybe eight of them on a relatively small carrier. How We could go 500 tons. Now, there are benefits to both. Um, the 500 ton one is going to be able to carry enough people to probably take a ship. The, the 251, eh, you might need two. Maybe more, depending on the ship. The issue, though, is that if there's enemy fire, some of them are going to be shot down. You shoot down a 500 ton one, that's much more you're losing. You shoot down a 250 ton, oh, there's another one. Um, armor is really too heavy to put on fighters. Uh, you can do it, but when we want to kind of just go faster, we're going to be probably trading the armor for speed. So we could go 250, we could go 500. I'm probably going to go 500 on the basis of it's just easier and less micro. So for that, we're going to grab ourselves a boarding bay, small. We'll drop uh, the other stuff that is unnecessary. And we know we've got about 200 tons to play with here. Probably a little bit less if we're completely honest with ourselves. So we're going to pull up our good old friend over here. I'm going to type in 500 tons. Um current engine is a uh, power boost two times. Yeah, we're working on above that, but for now that's the issue. Uh, desired range. We're going to put point 0.1 in there. That's 100 million. That's probably even too far. Maybe we want to be less than that. You know, maybe like point 0.05. That's 50 million. That's probably fine. Uh, desired tonnage. Desired speed. Let's see if we can get 100, not 100, sorry, a 10,000. That would be, 100,000 would be a lot. Uh, max engine size, 45%, and very much military, and not when tugging something. Okay, so what it's saying is, look for an engine of about 3.2, 3.3. Um, that seems acceptable. Can we get the speed up? I'm kind of hoping we could hit, like, I want to hit 20, but I don't think we will. Uh, better, although I don't know how much space we'll manage to get in. By the way, the fuel tanks are just going to be one fighter fuel, because we're getting to the point where it's like, yeah, you can you can do that. That's a lot of fuel. Um, can we get up to 15? I don't think we will. Let's try 14. Yeah, we're going through uh, too far now. We don't have enough space left. Let's try bringing this down again. I bet if we put that in, we're probably going to go over the amount we're allowed, but we'll give it a whirl. So this is 3.8, two times. Okay. So uh, design tech. Engine. All the way max on fuel consumption. And... Uh, what am I looking for? Uh, size. Yeah, there we go. Uh, 3.8. go. Look at that. That's a lot of power just to go in a tiny little craft like this. So, MPD. Uh, we need the fuel consumption, which is... Fuel is per hour. Almost 700. Wow. For a tiny little engine like this. Uh, that's that one rounded. And the mass is 190 tons. Okay. And we will insta- Ooh, something name. Jeffrey's Dracos. Okay, instant that out. Fresh tech. Engine. Ah. Oh, nine tons over. No. Okay, um, we're going to have to lose about 10 tons off this, so we'll scale that back. 
and then MPD. Okay, there we go. We've got ourselves our troop transport. It's not as fast as I would have liked. I would have very much liked a, a good deal faster on this. Um, obviously, most of that's down to using the small boarding bay. Um, just is what it is at the end of the day. There's nothing we can really change about that unless we were like going for a smaller boarding bay or we were to just try and change the profile of the vessel entirely. We've got an extra ton to play with. Uh, right now, it has a speed of uh, just under 12k and a range of... Oh, we've only got one ton. Well, this is perfect then. Fuel storage, fighter. 0 0.06 billion. 60 million range. And we're probably going to launch it at, you know, 10 million range or something. We'll be firing it when enemy missiles are about. Uh, it will get just destroyed completely. So that's reasonable. Obviously, this is just to show you the armor, but like that's 25 tons, that's 51 tons, 80 tons, and you know, 110 tons. There's very little point in putting armor on this because you'll be pushing way too much weight with armor. At higher tech levels, sure, but with this, not really. So uh, this is not an ammunition transport. It is a assault shuttle or assault transport. I'll probably say it's an assault shuttle. Assault transport was what we've been using for our uh, our drop ships and stuff. So assault shuttle and is the Fusco assault shuttle. There's nothing more we want on this. You might say, well, what about your maintenance? Like, isn't this going to break down? Do you notice it's flight time? One hour. Yes, it will. It will fail once per year almost. Well, 99% of the time it will fail once per year. Oh, no. The flight time is one hour. If it's out for one hour and we have a breakdown, that is incredibly unlikely. I'm just saying you don't need to worry about maintenance on this thing. Uh, it has 11 crew. Most of them are there just to watch the engine. Um... Other than that, it's all good. We will be changing the engine out next year. But because it's a fighter, that's not really a problem. And yes, you don't change engines out on fighters. You just scrap them and you build a new one. So we might not even actually build the fighter, but we might just leave it as a placeholder for now. That's, again, fine. Um, so we're going to close you down. We're going to take the bigger engine and just obsolete that. And Okay. Uh, we could move on to the next part, which would be the carrier. But I'm actually going to take a quick journey over to the land of ground units. Hello. So, we're going to need a new class design. This is infantry, heavy power armor, with boarding combat, and basic genetic enhancement. Notice that this is kind of not working. Uh, that's because to select multiple items, you have to hold control, and bam, it works. Um, doesn't work in all menus, works in some. There's no indication which ones it works in. Yay, UI. Anyway, uh, so now we have infantry with heavy power armor and boarding combat ability along with genetic enhancement, which if I take that off, notice how their hit points do not change. Why are you not changing? Oh, and the hit points are changing. I'm looking at the wrong one. Yeah, 25% up. So they're up to 15 hit points. Perfect. Now, to do boarding... You're going to be fighting effectively light infantry with light armor and light personal weapons. I believe they're just termed as. The crew will be minimal in terms of defense, but there will be a lot of them, and we're going to be fighting into them. We have 250 tons, I believe, to move, so we can afford to get ourselves, say, like 20 people with personal weapons. Well, 21. Or we can go crew served anti personnel and give everyone a machine gun. That way we'll get six times the shots. Yeah, we'll drop a bit of AP, but that doesn't really matter. That's not a problem for us. Um, again, we're fighting people with minimal armor. So, maybe crew served anti-personnel is the way to go. We don't need a HQ unit. The unit is too small to really benefit from that. You can, but it's just, it's not really worth it. Um, in theory, we could just go pure crew served anti-personnel. We could just go that way with this. Or we could just go improve personal weapons. Uh, we could go heavy, but there's literally no point in this AP. It, it serves no purpose, and it's so large. It's just not helpful. Um, so we're just going to make ourselves infantry, heavy power armor, and we are going to call these Marines. Space Marines. 
Uh, we called our basic troops Praetorians, so... Hmm. What can we call these? I think we just call them Praetorian Marines. Praetorian Marine. Uh, and this is with machine gun, so... We did type with, so... With machine gun. Uh, great. Instant out. And then we'll also just do Praetorian Marine. Instant that out. So the sizes we're looking at, we're looking at 250 tons, which is pretty tiny. Um, if, you know, if 10,000 tons is a company, we're looking at a unit. I would say a squad is like 100 tons. 250 unit. Uh, what would we call a thousand? Like a platoon? Anyway, uh, we're going to go new. We're going to make ourselves a marine. Uh, and then we'll call them unit. Oh, yeah, every time. Marine uh, boarding unit. Be in there for boarding? Sure. And then we've got to figure out how to get 250 tons. Well, let's start with Torian Marine, and we'll get 20 of you. 20, 20 with machine guns. That's a lot of machine guns. Uh, I think what we'll do is it's down to like 10, and then we'll add in just a lot of basic Praetorian Marines. I don't want to just go pure machine guns. Um, we'll edit that down to about 30. Um, 20. 10 tons left. I wonder how much, uh, like, a, a headquarters would be for, like, very low capacity. 10 tons. Ew. Well, now you're talking. We'll put, uh, we'll put a commander in. If only for the RP. Why not? Um, avoid combat. Yeah, you don't have a gun. Like, the downside of, like, yeah, your heavy power armor and stuff, like, you don't have a gun. You've just got, like, a set of equipment in front of you. Whatever. Uh, and we'll put you a unit commander, probably a sergeant. So, Praetorian Marine Sergeant. We'll instant that. Praetorian Marine Sergeant. We'll get one of you. Bam. 31 troops. Uh, 10 with machine guns. 20 without. We might want to just play around with that. Maybe make that 24. Maybe make that 12. So, we've got 24, not 12, sorry, 8. 33 people in total. That gives us some lasting ability. Um, if we were to go the other way, we'd end up with... Uh, like 14 and 14. Mm. What if we were to go this way? 29 troops. Yeah, I want the more HP. I think that gives us a little bit of viability here. Okay. Eight with machine guns, 24 without, and a sergeant. That means that they'll be operating in squads of four, uh, one machine gun, and three troops. That's why I kind of think the ratio works. We've got eight squads, and then we've got the Praetorian sergeant, who presumably, like, would just sit on the outside of the ship, just coordinating people. Um, I did select non-combat class. Yeah, okay. Great. In which case, these are good. The only thing we'd ever want to really change with these is if we get, say, like, more genetic enhancement down the road. Otherwise, this marine boarding unit is good to go. Uh, one thing we can do, though, now we have the genetic enhancements, is we can make ourselves a new version of all of our infantry. Because currently, our Praetorians, we probably don't care about the troopers so much, but the MG, the LAV, and the Praetorian themselves, they all can be augmented. So if we were going to go infantry, light, uh, we don't need the boarding for these guys. And then we're going to go um, improve personal weapons. This would just be Praetorian. And then we put like two at the end. Just to double check. Yeah, that's what we've got. And we don't want to avoid combat.
Okay, so we've got our new units here. Now, we can go to unit series and we can create ourselves a unit series. So we're going to create series. We're going to call this um, Praetorian Trooper. Uh, we'll create a series. We'll call this Praetorian with MG and Praetorian with LAV. And then we can drag people in. So we drag in the Praetorian. And then over the top, by selecting the Praetorian Trooper, we can then add the Praetorian 2. Now what this says is, when we reinforce a unit that has a missing Praetorian in it, it will look to replace them with a Praetorian 2. And then if there aren't any available, it will look to replace them with Praetorian. It's kind of an annoying system for replacements. I kind of wish you could just put them on a planet with a garrison and then tell the garrison to repair like you do with ships. Just be like, hey, replace these units. Uh, it doesn't work that way. It's very annoying. I really hate the system, but this is how you can work it. Um, you then just need to make yourself like a specific company that's designed to fill units and then you tell it it's a replacement company. Uh, if you want to do that, by the way, I believe... Use the replacements. Yeah. So what you know, companies will do is they will drag units from ones with use replacements if they are above them in the hierarchy. So you can make people get reinforced. And they will look for reinforcements who are above in the order here. So I'm going to just continue doing this. I'll be like, hey, this is a uh, LAV Praetorian. This is an MG Praetorian. Aren't they lovely? And then oh, this is the new version and this is the new version. And that way we can make the new version and then we can have them reinforced whenever someone dies, they'll get replaced. Also, one thing you can do is create a new series and call this, um, what's the name of our, uh, is it Hector Transport is our, yes. So we call this the Hector, um, Supply Transport Series. And then we can add ourselves a Hector Transport in there. This way, when supplies are used up, occasionally they use the vehicle up. And when that happens, we can always just be like, hey, reinforce with a new vehicle. And what it will do is it will take a vehicle with supplies from a unit, which is just supply vehicles. So we can effectively um, fill formations who have used supplies with new supplies. It's, yes, a hacky workaround. I don't like the supply system very much either. Um, great. So we've got our marine boarding unit. There's... Honestly, not a lot of time that's going to go by before... Sorry, there's actually, honestly, a lot of time that's going to go by before we have an upgrade for you. We're looking at a genetic enhancement. There's another two tiers to go. And we're not going to do them anytime soon. So we're going to definitely start building you. Now, the question is how many of you we need to build. Well, we need to build one per fighter. Well, how many fighters are we going to be building? Well, we need to find out because we're going to need to know for a number of carriers we're going to build. I'm thinking two carriers and then however many we fit on the carriers. Also note the rank, by the way, is the only... One of our at all units, only one of, out of all of them that uses just a knight. This is actually a sir captain, I believe, or something. This is, you know, knight captain. This is just knight. Just such a small unit. So, anyway, uh, moving on. Oh, and you can mark, you know, Praetorians as obsolete and stuff down here. I'm not going to do that just yet. Um, okay, let's go deal with the carrier. This is going to be a light carrier, so new ship class. This is... Ah, did I run out of names? Oh, I did. Oh, whoops. Uh, delete. Delete, delete, delete. I didn't think I'd have run out of names so quickly. There were 40-something on this list. I guess we've gone through them. Huh. Okay, I've taken a load of names for people who have been involved with the RP on the Discord. I've altered them a little bit, and then we have a list of people we're going to use in future. However, anyway, taking uh, the first one I picked out, which I believe was... Dark Thing. Uh, Dark Thing, you are going to be a light carrier. I'm going to just type in the word light, and there we go. Much quicker. Uh, this is a light carrier. So, you are going to fill the slot probably 15,000 tons. You're going to be done with this uh, August next year. Now, if I recall correctly, we had an engine that we liked which we were using for basically all of our ships, and it gave us a very reliable speed. So if we just open up our obsolete, actually, we don't even need to look at that. We can just go over to um, Command Carrier Hardy. 
Here we go. Four MPDs. Let's just try and recreate this engine. So, because why don't we use this engine, you say? Oh, well, because we've now got a better uh, fuel consumption rate. We've got 0.6 as opposed to 0.7. So design a new class. I feel that we trick out the engine a little bit, make it better. Uh, let's go engines. And this is MPD, fuel consumption. Um, I'm not sure. I know the size. So let's put the size down. Okay. Now, the fuel consumption is going to be kind of messed up because uh, of the reduction. However, we can get the EP to be right. I believe it was that. No, wait, just higher. I have no memory of this place. Oh, it was one size smaller. There we go. There we go. That's bang on. Exactly the right power, exactly the right size, and the fuel consumption we should find is down a seventh, which it is. Perfect. So you're going to be the MPD. And Devar and Void Singer is going to remain. Oh, I'm going to have to unlock you just to be able to select the damn name, aren't I? There we go. It's going to remain the name of the people who make the engine on the basis of uh, all it is is a tweak. So. There we go. Two of those engines should get up to speed. Uh, obviously, we need to have the range be good, but. That's something I'll tweak later. Let's go over to the main event. Uh, personally, I guess we'll add armor. Maybe a little bit high. Hmm. We'll put seven on for now. And then we want to grab ourselves. Grab ourselves a merry little Christmas. May the Yule Tide Gay. From now on, your hangar deck will be miles away. Yeah. There we go. Two hangar decks. That's all craft. If they're 500 tons, obviously we could go eight. Although that doesn't leave very much room. You know what? We'll put eight in for now. Well, four and eight craft. And we'll just tweak the maintenance a little bit because that's always going to be a big factor. So. Maintenance storage bay. We'll try a large one. Yeah, the problem with the large maintenance storage base, it gets hit. We're kind of doomed. So I'm going to say, just grab like four maintenance storage bays. Uh, we'll grab ourselves a auxiliary control. Not a flag bridge. Not big enough. Senior CO. I kind of think that any capital class ship should have senior CO because everything else will be fighters and missile platforms. Um, actually, no, it already has commander selected. Interesting. Uh, let's go grab ourselves open weapon platform. Knight. Yeah, okay. So it does automatically distinct. Uh, distinct? It distincts. I think having a bridge makes it distinct. Okay, we don't need to put a senior CO on. Um, we need engineering. There we go. Deployment time. Uh, we're going for two years on our fleet, which is a long time. So, go two years on this. Probably the next generation is going to be a little bit less. Um, this carrier is kind of existing in a weird niche. Like, it's going to be designed with probably next gen tech, but to previous gen specs, particularly the engine. Um, next gen, we want to probably go from 5,000 to 6,000, but this probably is going to be having like decent lasers and shields compared to our current existing craft. It's going to be this kind of weird hybrid, which makes sense. It happens in real life a lot. Uh, we'll add some fuel storages. Not a large one because I want the ability to not have it all hold by one shot. And the existing large one is fine. You know, gives enough backup. This is a rough, you know, kind of spitballing it for now. Uh, sensors. It's not going to have any. It's going to rely on other people's sensors. Mm, 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 mm. We can give it a small sensor by itself. That said, have we designed new sense attack recently? We have. This is crazy. There's so much new. You've got so much new tech in you. Wow. Uh, I guess we have to obsolete you as well. Give it probably just a really tiny, like, maybe like a 
30 ton, 20 million range sensor. It doesn't need to be large, I guess, just in case it does operate by itself. I like to have that redundancy involved. So this is an ASS uh, 21, next gen ASS with a target of 21 million range and five kilotons. Uh, it masses 30 tons and it is designed by DeWitt Electronic Industries. Done. We'll instant that out. Refresh our tech. Put that on there. Okay. Obviously, we could make it like an anti-missile ship as well by putting anti-missile missiles on it. Um, using the missiles that we've actually found. There's potential there. The problem is I feel that would be a weird thing to add to this. And it would kind of eat up everything else. Like, that would be it. It wouldn't have anything else left. It would be anti-missile system and carrier. Which, just a little bit odd. Um, probably better that we wait to add the anti-missiles to the command anti-missiles. Or make a dedicated PD ship. Rather than putting things on this. It would just kind of be a weird add-on. I don't think it would really benefit it a lot. It would mean it's going to weird situations. Boarding an anti-missile. Oh, strange combo. And that's we're deliberately getting very, very close. And they keep launching missiles at us or something bizarre. Either way, I, I don't feel that this needs to have part of the PD role on it. But the fact we have those precursor missiles is something I've not forgotten. I will forget it at some stage, probably, but not now. Uh, let's go and give this thing some new lasers. Just so that if we get close, we can punch a hole in. And also, they could also work as backup PD if needed. Um... So, while well, I've got the active search sensor up, we do want to have, like, a PD-type role for you. Um, well, they can use the PD sensor from someone else's ship, though. Yeah, that's not a problem. All of these lasers are defunct. They're all dead. They're all, you know, no good to us anymore. We're going to obsolete them. I mean, you know, they're still vaguely decent, but... Ah, wrong one. Obsolete. Obsolete. Okay, uh, we could give it a long range laser or we could give it like some much shorter range kind of brawling lasers. Ah, uh, we're still re researching the spinal mount. We're not going to have that until next year. I was going to say we could give this thing a spinal mount. Probably not its uh, area of expertise though, let's just be honest. Um, so we've got pretty large lasers now, like damage output of 10. Pretty sexy. Recharge rate 15, eh, less so, but still not terrible. We can go down to 6. Uh, we get a 10. Or we can go down to damage 4, which, remember, is a square number, which is nice, but less so because the lasers are much more focused about the penetration. In fact, we can look up the laser table. Um, because I believe I copied it. Damage template. Here we go. So, laser. 1, 2, 3. 6. 9. Okay, so 6 is actually a pretty decent number in terms of damage for a laser. Three is also decent. I mean, the range will be terrible, but it will be three directly and penetrating. And, you know, if you're going to go three, you might as well go four because you get more range for the same and more damage for the same recharge rate. Although the hull, uh, the the weight is bigger. So, um, also the 20 centimeter. Look at that range. Ooh, it's a sexy range. How about this being a small ship? I'm feeling we go for the smaller ones. On the basis of uh, we can double as a kind of like a mediocre PD. I was going to say bad, but judging by what we've had recently, actually they weren't bad. Um, so we'll go for like a damage output for shorter ranged. It will be able to maybe attack civilian shipping as well or very weak enemy craft. The idea is most of this is going to be done with its, you know, hangar deck. Uh, it could also have bombers. Maybe we want to add like a tiny little magazine just to give it the ability to use bombers. I don't want to go too heavy in that because bombers can be very powerful, but it's certainly somewhere we could go. So for now, we're going to make ourselves lasers. Um, we are going to completely redefine these. So I'm going to rip the name out. This is a UV laser, uh, which does uh, oh, C4. 
which is a D4 over 5 with a range of 160k and a mass of 200 tons. By Day Ram Tam Tam. Done. We'll instant that out. And then we're going to go to a turret design. Because we now have a much higher turret tracking and fire control rating speed. We definitely want to take advantage of that. Which means that our desired tracking rate is going to be 20,000. If we go quads. Yeah. Quads are pretty tempting. Now, um, I've been talking about hit to kill. I actually got this wrong because I was told this wrong a long time ago. Uh, hit to kill is not like HP of the component. It is the chance that the component dies. It's not hits to kill. It's actually just a kind of like a weird abstract number. The way it works, by the way, if, you, if you're wondering, is when you are hit, if you hit this component, compare the damage to this number. Then, you know, roll uh, a random number up to this and like say if you take four damage and this is a hits to kill eight roller dice that can go from one to eight one two three four if it's damage four we'll destroy the component five six seven eight will not this is basically a you know top end of your random number and if the roll is equal to or less than the damage the component is destroyed so armor doesn't actually protect the component it just increases the hit to kill which decreases the chance that it will get destroyed by any single hit but a single hit could still kill it and armor does not work like i mentioned like it's outside the main armor and then you put armor on the component to protect it no all components are inside the armor i was told that i believe that for like the last i don't know how many years i've been playing aurora no a turrets are technically inside your armor all that this armor does is decreases the chance it will die so, armor's a lot less viable than I thought. A lot less useful. Because, hey, you've got your ship armor. Just rely on your ship armor, mate. Um, we could add, like, a tiny bit. Like, you know, get the hits to kill up to 16. But, you know, we're adding considerable amount of weight for a ship of this size. So, we probably want to grab, say, I'm saying quads. I'm really thinking that quads would be good. And get, like, multiple quads on this thing. It could double as a PD ship in a pinch and it would also be able to do you know respectable damage at a respectable range um obviously we could go with smaller ones if we're more worried about uh it having the viability to keep fighting after it gets injured this is going to be a less so on that but if we do want to include a small magazine just to be able to have some bombers on board hmm I want to kind of go into... Yeah, we can go into magazine design. Let's see how big a magazine would be. So, magazine size. Obviously, it's going to be six, because it's probably size six missiles on our bombers. 300 tons. Just for the one? Oh, magazine size isn't the number of missiles. I keep looking at magazine size and being like, magazine size is the number of missile size. No, that's capacity. Okay, um, let's say we had... Eight bombers on board, which is the max capacity. Each bomber had four shots. So we're talking 32. Each shot was size six. So we're talking um, 216, I think. 216 is to reload all the bombers at once. So we would need 216. It's a 700-ton magazine. Like, that's just to do one reload. If we were going to go uh, more... You know, we're looking at 432. Mm. Yeah, and obviously this is like a reload we might not use. If we're not running bombers. Yeah. Hmm. I think... I think we'll do we'll do some of it just to give it like just for the RP purposes you shouldn't really do this but I'm gonna say 
for purposes of RP, I wanted to have that ability to choose between how it acts. And we can always put like four bombers on and four assault craft, and then we can have our bombers come back and get multiple reloads. Just means that we need less bombers on board. And we can make specialized like bomber missiles and stuff, which I think gives it a bit of, it's a bit more fun. Probably not as powerful as going min-maxing all in one way, but I think it'll be fun. So yes, uh, we'll put this magazine in. I could mess with the name. I guess I should put the weight because the weight is important. Uh, yeah, we also need like hit to kill because I'm not happy with hit to kill two. This is a capacity. 216. An 80% efficiency, 8% neutralization, hit to kill 12, and mass is 800 tons. Instant that. Refresh, and we'll add that anyway. Magazine. Oh. Need to come up with a name for that. Oop. Quickly add ourselves a company name. Iron Hand Serif Armaments. Yeah, I think they might need to be twins. So, uh, twin UV... So that's going to be times two. Damage times two. We can just put capacitor eight for this. What were, I, what were we doing with our lasers before? Oh, I was just making it very complicated and I didn't actually write that down. That would, hmm, yes, good me. I'll put C8 because that's how much it takes to recharge. Like, no, no, it's technically the capacitor. So I'll put times two. Times two, five, and the mass is going to be five, four, four. That's with no armor. So if we put like two or 50 tons, I'm not sure I'm happy with that. I'm kind of happier with not having to worry about that and just saying, hey, look, if you get through the armor on this, this is a light cruiser anyway. Not a light cruiser, a light carrier. Deal with the lack of armor. And then this is going to be weighing 544. And then definitely chucking the tracking speed in. Again, this is something you can't really see anywhere else. So 100% tracking speed goes in. And then we instant that. We also want to get ourselves a beam fire control. And this is where it might get a bit expensive. Our beam fire control is going to need a range of four times or uh, three times might not be enough. Yeah. And then the speed is going to need to be four times as well. 400 ton fire control. Mm. Yeah. Okay. One, two. And then we will put the beam fire control in as well. EFC. K. A. And mass of 400 tons. Uh, company name. Serif Morsink. And we will also obsolete the old ones because they're based on a lower tracking speed. Okay, we're kind of getting to our limit here. The maintenance life's a little bit on the low side. Uh, let's get ourselves another engineering space. Okay. So far, so good. It has its two twin lasers. Not huge. Uh, it has a magazine. That's fine. It has beam fire control. Only one of them, but it does need a reactor. And this is where it's going to get a little bit more expensive because the reactor is going to need to be 16 power. Or we could go two eights. That's always an option. Uh, I believe we have a better technology for reactors as well now. Tokamak. Yeah, power up at 8 for 50 tons. So we could go for two of those. Again, it would be helpful um, to save a little bit of space by going for power of... There we go. 80 tons. We saved 20 tons there. And obviously, it's not a lot of power. 16 is not a lot of power. We're talking about, you know, four lasers. I'm tempted to just go and say one power plant. 
it does risk, you know, everything getting knocked offline by one power plant being hit. But the other thing we might want to consider is shields. Um, shield tech is something that we are working on and is pretty decent for us. The downside is how we're going to get shields in this form factor. We'd probably have to lose a twin laser. And even then, it wouldn't be a huge shield. We could lose a little bit of hangar space. Go down from eight to six craft. Not hugely keen on that either. That is kind of the point of this thing. We might just end up not having a shield on this, which would kind of suck. Um, it wouldn't really be meeting the next generation specifications that it's being built to. Hmm. Um, I think we go with the smaller power plant because we need to save space. Like, this is a Tokamak fusion reactor. Uh, R16 mass 80 tons. Get that one out. And then we'll... Oh, need to copy name. Jeffries and Strain. A lot of Jeffries involved in this one. And we will obsolete the old Stellaratas. And rename, not the class, the comp. Chuck that in. So, obviously we're over by about 100 tons, which is not the best amount to be over. Let's have a quick check on our command cruiser, because I think the range for that was 30 billion. Yeah, we need to go up on our range. Our range is only 20 billion, or well, 22 right now. Uh, let's go grab our fuel. Fuel, 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 Under F, that makes sense. Get another large. And then I guess... There we go. Wait, why did our weight just go down? Am I imagining things? I think I'm imagining things. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's well within the 15,000 tons. What was I doing there? Oh, well. We're within the 15,000 tons again. It's possible we could try, if we, if we drop one laser battery, we could maybe get a shield in there. Although, you know, what are we shielding? Like, fighters? Yeah, they'll be launched. Like, what are we intending to protect with this? Uh, we could put a small shield in. The issue is, like, again, losing the laser battery hurts a fair bit when we've invested so much into such a big fire control. I feel that to make that valuable, we need to go double on the laser battery. Two twins gives us four shots. Four shots is kind of the minimum, I think, for investing into such a large beam fire control. What can we get with this? Let's see. I'm going to start doing a pruning cycle and then... See what we can get to after a pruning cycle. Our shield tech is maybe just not good enough to make it worthwhile. Just one of the things that we generally look for in shields is being delta or better. I believe we're currently actually looking into delta shields. Um, where did my... Thank you. Back over here. Research. Delta shields, yeah. We're currently looking into delta shields, so... Mm. Our recharge rate is also still 1, which not as important, but yeah. Also, our shield generator size is 12. I kind of would like a larger cap, not that it matters in this case. Um, yeah, so we are going to probably forgo shields on this for now. That's something that you can maybe get in an upgrade. Um, can't quite fit extra armor on, uh, I guess. We give a bit more fuel because it will be giving fuel to its fighters. Not that the fighters use that much fuel. Um, they use a lot of fuel for their size. But overall, they are using one fighter fuel tank each. You know, whatever. Like, that's, you know, a thousand fuel. This thing has 1.1 million liters on board. Not an issue. Although, bombers might use more fuel. That's something that we might have to consider for the future. Okay, 15,000 tons. It has a beam fire control capable of doing amazing things. Two twin UVL lasers. Uh, UVL lasers? UV lasers. Which are pretty decent. Um, the fire rate is every five seconds, which is kind of what we require for PD1. And their damage is a little bit more than PD. So, all good. Uh, if we have a look, they have the one fuel, uh, one power plant. That's fine. They have a whole load of maintenance. Also, I've included some small maintenances to try and make sure that if the maintenance bay is hit, they still have maintenance supplies. 
Uh, the engine is doubled, so it's got a little bit of redundancy. We have a magazine capable of reloading a few times. And we have a sensor that we probably should have used the extra space to make like a PD sensor. Just in case. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, a 50 ton sensor with our new sensor tech will be better than the 65 ton sensor that was on the previous one on the Hardy. So, yeah, and it gives it that ability to, if it is alone, it can do a bit of PD. It's not its primary role, but it will help. So I think we'll add that. Uh, we'll add a company name as well. And then you're an ASS-21 with a range of... 520, okay, not million, against size 6. Uh, your mass is 50 tons. Done. And, you know, honestly, a pretty damn good job of it. And we'll take the name. Fresh tech. Grab ourselves. Oh, we got one ton left. Yeah! Uh, all we did for that is sacrifice one fuel storage tank effectively, and I think a tiny bit of maintenance. Um, again, the maintenance life is still great. Those are the kind of things I added on, being like, oh, I guess if it's up space, you know, fine. So this is pretty decent overall. Um, we will quickly pop up to miscellaneous. It is prefix G1 because it is Gen 1. Um, it doesn't have a shield. Its weapons are definitely Gen 2 spec, but I feel that it's also the drive. Between the drive and the shield, it's definitely a G1. And then we need to find a name, so we're going to call you um, Halo Ships. Is it not like a Halo UNSC like frigate list or something? I thought there was like a UNSC frigate list. So up here there is. Uh, I'm not going to use Tau. Bleh. Class theme. No. Check under Halo. Halo ships. Halo systems. No. Hmm, I guess just Halo ships it is then. That's fine. Uh, we'll use random names from theme. Commander priority. I would say this is a, like a 8. Fine. And armor 7, it's, you know, or is effectively a frigate. Not bad. It's a light carrier because it's a carrier. But I kind of wish I could call it like a carrier frigate or something. Because that's the kind of tonnage that I'm thinking. But whatever. Light carrier. Um, it fills the Corvette firepower while still having a hangar deck to speak of. It has pretty good weapons, honestly, compared to our current gen. Because it's built with next gen weapons. So this is going to be the Dark Thing light carrier class locked in. Okay, so we have ourselves a dark thing. We have uh, probably plans to build, I'm saying, two of them for now. We know that they will be able to have, what, eight assault craft each. So we probably want 16 units. And hey, if we only go for some assault craft and some bombers, this means we've got, re you know, spares, replacements for when they obviously all die. So we're going to go over to here... Ground unit training. Ah, hasn't updated yet to show us the... No, it has. There we go. Marine boarding unit. We will want to create... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Okay. Sixteen marine boarding units. As for the carrot, we can't build it yet. We're waiting on the expansion of the shipyards. That's going to take until August next year. And I don't think we start building the fighters yet because we're going to probably replace their engines with more powerful engines, which will hilariously cut their range, like, a lot. It just might be a problem. But they need the power, so that's fine. And you're all locked. Got your name. Great. We're in a good position right now. Go for five seconds just to clear that. There we go. Much better. Earth, you're such a mess. Well, Sol in particular. I mean, also Earth. We did kind of leave it full of holes where we mined everything out of it. Oh, well. So much coronium needed. So much coronium needed. 
Oh, well. Oh, well, oh, well. Anyway. <laughs> we have ourselves... We have ourselves some boarding uh, craft. Or at least the basic design. Uh, we have ourselves some genetically modified space marines. And we have ourselves a carrier that's actually using quite a lot of next generation tech. It's got these lovely lasers, including better sensors and so forth. Uh, it's going to be pretty good. And we can always retrofit up the engines if we need to. For now, though, we're going to call it here for this episode. If you've liked, go check out the Discord um, and get involved in the interaction stuff over there. Uh, they did do the recent demilitarization of the houses, which got ourselves uh, a load of free military units of varying quality. Uh, however, not all the houses did demilitarize, so that's causing some issues right now. Uh, also, why we didn't get as many units as we could have. So, um, if you want to go check that out, also do that. You can also find this announcement channel, which tells you about my streams and about my videos that go out. But if you want to take a Russian roulette on that and maybe get told, use the YouTube sub feed. Click the button below. Subscribe. Use the bell icon. Hope a video turns up there. It might. It's unlikely to. It might. Uh, also, if you want to do a comment and like on the video, uh, that does really help. The algorithm really likes those. So if you can do that, that'd be very much appreciated. But until next time, stay shiny.